Got a little good looking hay in some places. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday. I don't know about you guys, but that is a very welcome surprise first thing in the morning. Opening up a new field this morning. Got to thinking, this is week number six of harvest already. That's insane. Almost as insane as having all those trucks sitting. Yet I still gotta wait on one to hurry up and get over here. It's gonna be all right though. Hector brought burritos. Let's go have us a day. So this is kind of cool. Uh, when I was spraying this field, it was a double crop. You can see a lot of straw left over from the wheelage. When I was spraying it, I ran out of chemical one and a half passes short. So you can see there's a line right here. That's where my last pass was. So everything that way got sprayed. And then you kind of pan over. Well, you can see over yonder's is where I went around the outside first. So I had a pass right here and then a half pass over there. Spraying it straight east and west. Huh. Well, the chemical definitely worked. And I can tell this corn is a little bit shorter, but I should say this corn is a little shorter. But that could also be because it was really, really wet down here on this bottom. So it's hard to know if it was the weed competition or the excessive moisture early on. It's always nice when by complete random luck, you have 12 for the last. No one or two left over. Yeah. systems are eventually going to fail. They all fail, and it's just when. Thank God we we're getting greened out to where we're about to switch up what we we're doing. This might throw a whole monkey wrench in the pot. Maybe Glenn can go chop corn tomorrow. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to go try and get a round of trucks cut at the other field before this shuts me down. See how far we make it. Now that's weird. The code went away, the caution light went away, we're running full power. I already sent all the trucks home but the four that were already here. What the hell do we do now? Do, do we get the part or do we wait? Is it a fluke? Or is it fine? God, I hate death. 
plus side though, like I was saying, this is a good time to have random issues. There's never a good time to deal with death problems, but when it comes to the middle of harvest, at least it's when we're getting greened out on corn and we're trying to come up with a plan for the rest of the week. The bad part is I think we had a plan on how to run two choppers the rest of the week. And now I don't know anymore. Just unhooked the wagon. I'm sitting here listening to thunder. Well, unhooking the thunder, but I'm not getting any friggin' rain. That's annoying. Still a chance from that storm over yonders, but that's really, really annoying. Oh, it'd be nice to do this for a couple hours, but it's already letting up. So, what do we find now on the chopper? Uno momento. Half mile north, it's already quit. So, like I was saying, called deer. Well, I didn't call deer. Bart called deer. He talked to our local dealer, talked to McPherson. Deer has come out with a pip, meaning, hey, those death heads are bad. We've made a new death head that's supposedly better, but you got to have software with it. So, unlike Glenn's chopper, where we changed it ourselves, this one they have to do. Plus, it's under warranty, so they have to do it. McPherson has a pile of deaf heads at their dealership. Well, it probably would have benefited us to send somebody to drive, get get there tonight, get it, get up early in the morning, come back. Because what we're doing now is relying on Deer's Warehouse in Illinois and UPS to get it here by tomorrow. Now, I don't know if you've shipped anything with UPS lately or FedEx or the post office, you will pay an exorbitant amount for next day shipping. It usually shows up in two to three days. So we're paying a big amount to get that thing here tomorrow. The hope is UPS usually delivers to our dealership around 10. We can have the chopper there. They can install it by mid-afternoon. We can be testing it. Hoping. Here's the truly aggravating part of that little shower right there. Did zero benefit other than keeping dust down. But you look at that hay right there. Not that great of hay. Amount wise. But that was beautiful hay. We could have raked and baled tomorrow, put in a barn. That would have been about as premium as it gets. Well now it's had a sprinkle on it, so now it's got to lay another day. So it's going to bleach out because of the sun. Now all of a sudden that's not premium hay anymore. Don't get me wrong. It's going to still be good hay. It just won't be that ultra premium level that you hope for. Which we've been chasing all year. Because as you guys have followed along, it's been a tough year for putting up good hay. So that'll now be a little bleached, but it's still barn quality. It'll be fine. It's just... You miss, you miss that top ledge and it pisses you off. As for tomorrow, we've already called the audible. It's getting dark. I'm taking them off. We've already called the audible. So now instead of me going to chop a customer's corn to haul to a different customer's pit, Glenn is going to. I am going to possibly pick around on a little bit of feed here in the morning to test that chopper, test that code. All it is, sprinkler corners and stuff, so you have one load here, one load there type of thing. And then, hopefully, that death head shows up, we can get it into deer, they can get working on it. That is the ultimate goal there. As far as our corn goes, everything's still too green. Maybe a week from now we can cut three fields and then leave, or four fields, leave the other four. Just because we're... We're bumping that green level too hard, so we gotta wait, let that dry out a little bit. Right now, I am driving around, gonna go look at a neighbor's couple fields of feed, try and strategize where we go from here. So with that being said, guys, I'm gonna go look at these fields, I'm gonna jam some music, cause it's been a long day, my head hurts. I'll talk to you in the next one.